Hey, what's up? This is your girl, Taylor Wilde. Welcome back to Wild On Season 5, the podcast where you get the insider's view of the weird, wild world of wrestling and witchcraft. On Wednesdays, today's guest is a varsity cheerleader turned professional wrestler who then became a famous professional wrestling cheerleader turned wrestling witch. My girl. Which is exactly how our stars aligned, obviously. She is the only female member of the House of Black. She's a small town girl turned AEW superstar. Ladies and gentlemen, my sister witch, Julia Hart. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time out to do my podcast. Yeah, of course. Witches Unite? <laughs> I know. <laughs> it was what I call like divine timing. Meeting you in New York and your friends with Danny, who I was sitting next to. And yeah. I just thought we are in this weird, weird, amazing time where there's so many witch witches represented in professional yeah. wrestling. And I really wanted to reach out to you because I thought... People are always trying to break us apart. People are always trying to, instead of compare. unify women, yes, compare yeah. and make us, what, jealous? No, we're witches. We work together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you've had a really interesting career. And now, of course, you are an AEW superstar. You're a member of House of Black. How did your association with House of Black come together? So it all started when Malachi misted me in the face. Okay. And there's either two, there was two routes. Either it wasn't going to go anywhere or it was going to go somewhere. And I mm -hmm. like made sure it was going to go somewhere. So it all started with like the eye patch. It was like, what's going on with Julia? And then it was like, finally, when I took the whole turn, because the varsity blonde's like, the cheerleading gimmick was cute for me. Yep. It was it was a cute little moment. It was a good yeah. starter. <laughs> but I knew I always wanted to embrace something else and be something something else that wasn't just cheer because I was so over it. Like I was so over it. And Malachi is just like a brain of knowledge that I could have used in that moment too from learning. Yes. So it was just I was like, I need more. And mm -hmm. this was definitely more. <laughs> so I was like and I'm learning so much, and it's such a good turn for me. But yeah, it's funny because you know, never judge a book by its cover. Mm -hmm. Aesthetically speaking, you looked perfect as yeah. the cheerleader, but within minutes of talking to you, I was like, "No, girl is all witch." I was so over cheer, <laughs> like I was just so over it. <laughs> How many years did you do cheer for? Six. Where did you cheer, should I say? Yes, and so I grew up in Minnesota, and I went yep. to a high school called Bloomington Jefferson, and I cheered for my okay. high school. Competitive cheer, not like, we did football sideline too, but we yeah. also did like competitive and went to nationals and stuff, so. <sighs> okay, so as a Canadian, what I know about cheer is bring it on. <laughs> How aligned is Bring It On to American Cheer? Oh my gosh, not even, maybe back in the 2000s, but I mean, I was cheering from <laughs> like years like 2014, 2015 to 2019. So it was like a okay. little bit of a, we try to not make it like Bring It On. I get a, a good way to show cheer now is a cheer on netflix as a documentary yes that is like kind of what i went through is that okay the way that one went not bring it on bring it on <laughs> bring it on not so much but definitely <laughs> cheer yeah so it was more of an era thing it's not that it wasn't like bring it on it's just it's not 2002 anymore yes you're saying. yeah okay fine yeah. fair i can live with that <laughs> yeah what was the worst injury you had as a cheerleader Ooh, so I had two really bad ones. One was my shoulder. I tore my labrum and I battled that for a really long time because like it would pop out and pop back in. Oh. And in cheer, we don't have an off season, kind of like wrestling. There's no off season. So it's like if you're right. out, like you're kind of screwed. 
So I didn't get surgery until like two years later of being torn. And I would just cheer with one arm. And I would like, oh my wear God. brace. I would literally lift girls with one arm. Do the whole routine with one arm. Because I was like, <sighs> I don't want to be off. And then I finally got the surgery. And then I quit my senior year. Long story. <laughs> but then in eighth no grade, I got a really bad concussion. I was like at the top of the stunt. And I was supposed to like switch my legs in the air and I totally missed okay. and the girls dropped me and I just landed on my head and then oh, gosh. four days later I'm in the hospital like throwing up and because I didn't oh, I told no. myself oh I'm fine I'm fine I'm fine because it was like our first competition that weekend too so I was like oh like in my first year in varsity I was like I can't miss it and then you know, if it's your head, go take care of yourself. And I've learned that now. I was like, yeah. if it's my head, I, I have to be honest with myself and take care of yourself because concussions are not something to mess with. Well, that just shows the level of competitiveness that you mm-hmm. got dropped on your head from like not like, from greater than your height, from yeah. multiple girls' heights. Yeah. And you're barfing and like that, I couldn't that even was the walk. only thing. It was literally like the worst concussion. I was, and I'm like in eighth grade, so I'm just like a little girl. And I remember to him in the hospital, (laughs) it's the day of the competition that I wake up and I'm throwing up. And my cheer coach, one of the cheer coaches calls my mom and goes, well, can she just come quick and do a two minute, it's just a two minute routine. Can she just come do it quick? As I'm in the hospital, like throwing up, can't see. And then I'm like, mom, I gotta go. And she's like, are you kidding me? And I'm like, I gotta go, I gotta go. I can do it two minutes, that's all it is. You know, I was, oh, like, brainwashed in cheer. I was like, I can do it. But. Well, it, isn't that a big part of cheer, though? It's like it's like CrossFit, but, like, yeah. everyone drinks the Kool-Aid. It's, it's life. It's... It literally was my life. Literally nothing else. It was. I didn't even care about school. I could cheer. Of with, course. I will say it did teach me a lot of life lessons and it gave me a lot of morals, okay. which I'm very thankful for. Good. But I was also like, oh, my gosh. It's, like, the only thing I cared about. Oh, and I imagine too, like your work integrity and Mm -hmm. your ability to work through pain and like challenges, like nothing can probably get in your way. Like that was ingrained in your head at a very young age. Yeah, which is good because I'm a wrestler. And I just, (laughs) last week I literally had a match with Anna and I was like dying. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like pushing through in my head. So I'm I'm glad I had that mentality since a young age, but. You had the flu? No, I got uh, I landed like on some chairs in our match, oh. and it, they were facing the wrong way. So I landed on the hard side, and it hurt me so freaking bad. I couldn't even, I could barely move. <laughs> but I was oh, like, no. and you just powered through it. Yeah, I was like picturing myself with one arm in cheer, and I'm like, okay, I can do it. <laughs> I, can do it. <laughs> I just have to wrestle. Yeah. I have a whole body. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. You are one tough nut. That's. Like, amazing, but at the same time, the mother head of me is like, girl. <laughs> yeah, my mom was like, look after yourself. It's like, what are you doing? You need to stop. I'm like, no. So, okay, we're going to get back to your mom because your mom is a very important per- yeah. person in this conversation. Yes. But how does Mama Heart feel about her girl going from cheer to wrestling? Like, she loves it. Does she? Oh, my God. Yes. My parents are my <laughs> biggest supporters. They love Aww. wrestling. My mom never cared about wrestling until I got into okay. it, but now it's like, that's all she cares about. I'm like, oh my Aww. gosh, you don't have to care about it that much, but yeah, they both, my both my parents That's really wrestling. cool. Yeah. Are you an only child? Do you have siblings? I have two sisters. I have an older sister and a younger sister. Ooh, you got that middle child syndrome. Yes, but we all have really big <laughs> age gaps, so I feel like we all are, we're our own only child for a second, which is kind of nice. <laughs> that's <laughs> so, great. Yeah. What, what's the age gap between? So my older sister, she's 29, and okay. I'm 21, so we're eight years apart. And then my little That's sister, she's about to turn nine. Oh, my God. Your parents are unicorns. <laughs> well, my younger <laughs> sister is adopted, so oh. that, that makes sense. But Still, but, though. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So your younger sister is adopted. She's coming to this family. With a professional wrestling older sister. And what does your older sister do? My older sister, right now she just works for an online book company with my mom. They both work for the same place. 
Well, my sister has a degree in criminal justice, and she couldn't find out anything. She's so smart. She literally, she if qualified. it wasn't for her, I probably wouldn't have graduated high school. So <laughs> props to her. Really? Yeah. she's. Literally- okay, let's talk about this last year of high school where we were like all about bring it on. Then we were like, no, senior <laughs> year, we're not cheery anymore. What happened? So my shoulder was just... Boys? <laughs> <laughs> so my shoulder was so messed up that I, you know, my cheer coaches didn't want me to get surgery. I wanted to do wrestling, and I was just, okay. it was just a lot, yeah. I always, I started wrestling when I was, like, sophomore year, mm-hmm. but I could never fully commit because I was always at cheer or school or work or whatever. And I was like, I really need to fully commit to wrestling, and cheer was in the way. And I had already done everything I wanted to do in cheer. I Won nationals twice. I was captain. Like, what more? You can't really do anything with cheer after high school. So, I was like, what more? Can that I? yeah, fair. Oh, wrestling is going to be my career. I need to move on. Mm. And it was like this weird thing about quitting, and the, you know, kind of was like bring it on. I was like, I can't believe you're quitting, and I can't believe you're leaving. <laughs> and I was just like, oh my gosh, like not because I hate cheer, because there's nothing for me anymore. So it was just yeah, a whole weird thing quit cheer, finally start committing to wrestling, and then Mm -hmm. COVID hits. (laughs) Great timing. Great timing. (laughs) (laughs) Every time. It's like every time I was was trying to give 100% to wrestling, like something would happen. And then COVID, you know, the end end, the world of it. Yeah. The world is ending. (laughs) Like, oh my gosh. It It wasn't just you, girl. It's okay. (laughs) We're all in it together. Yeah. And I was like, (laughs) Okay, I guess I'm just gonna. I worked at Jamba Juice, so Jamba Juice was still open. So I was like, oh, we love Jamba Juice. I'll just work at Jamba Juice and save all my money. Oh, That's what oh I did God. all of COVID, but yeah. I mean, look where you landed, though. Yeah. So I am grateful for COVID in a way, just because it, yeah. yeah, it did help too, because I was a senior. They're like, well, if you like your grades, you guys can graduate. And I was like, woo, yeah. So we, just ended really yeah that's basically how it was well, that fucking is awesome yeah i was like <laughs> and i had so many parking tickets due to i think i had 300 dollars worth of parking tickets but they just Oops. let everybody go they're just like whatever <laughs> everybody's sick wow. whatever. so how heartbreaking was it though to not have like a senior prom honestly i was so over Couldn't school shit for me i was like <laughs> Heck yeah. Yeah. I was. That's why we get along. <laughs> I hated You're school. like, I fucking care. Yeah. I hated school. I was like, Wrong. I literally would always say, it was like, they don't ask for your GPA when you become a wrestler. <laughs> and then they Thank sure God. Didn't. Sure didn't. <laughs> sure didn't. So, Thank God. None of us do. You take a bump. <laughs> what's, yeah. Not, what's your G? Who cares? Okay. Well, y- you, though, you are so young mm-hmm. and, and you literally went from cheer into you were training already for wrestling COVID hits you're just like hustling at jumba juice <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> how did aew come along like how that like what a transition so there was nothing in minnesota for wrestling and then i saw i think it was like an ad for the nightmare factory it was like apply now and i was like i'll just try it i like wrote like a freaking essay oh my god love it <laughs> I wrote like an essay <laughs> sent it in and then two weeks later, I think it was the day after my birthday, and I was so sad. I was like, oh, I probably didn't get in. It was the day after my birthday, QT's wife texts me. She's like, hey, are you still interested? We'd love to have you. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. And I was like, I remember I ran outside. My parents were outside. I'm like, I'm moving to Georgia. And then they were like, yeah. And then literally a month later, I moved to Georgia, and I started training. And then three months after the camp, Cody – had asked me to come to AEW. And then the Varsity Blondes saw me and they're like, oh my God, she fits our gimmick. And then that was it. <laughs> I just, the dichotomy of characters yeah. is just so funny. Yeah. Because actually it's like life imitating art. You went from cheer into wrestling and then you started as a cheerleader, which you must have been like, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
<laughs> You've got to be kidding yeah. me to this much darker character. Mm-hmm. And what I was excited to learn is I wanted to know what your association with witchcraft was. Yeah. But it's actually sweet mama heart <laughs> that yes. is a witch. Yes, my mom loves witchcraft. She's always been so fascinated by it. When did it start for her? Do you know? Like, was it like in her teenage years and her thirties? Like, I think definitely in her teenage years. Uh, her favorite movie is Hocus Pocus. So that doesn't say anything. She loves twitches too. Just any. She loves the phases of the moon. She always tells me when it's a full moon. I'm like, okay, thanks, mom. Love now this. I know I'm crazy. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> but, yeah. It it is true. I yes. will tell you. As a firefighter, when it's in like a full moon, I'm like, I should have booked yeah. it. <laughs> gonna be it's gonna be crazy. Yes. Fuck. Same with like nurses, <laughs> police, EMS. We're all just like, oh god. Like it makes us seem yeah. crazy, but honest to goodness, it does affect so many people's behaviors yeah. and emergency services are yeah. dapped on a full, full moon. It's like, is it my period or is it the moon? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> or if you're really like yeah. both. <laughs> uh, does your mom practice like tarot? Does she collect crystals? Anything she like that? She doesn't do that. I, My older sister, she's really into tarot. I've walked in on her huh. like doing it and I was like, whoa, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but my older sister's always been into that too because my mom's always had like the cards. My mom just loved the cards that like the pictures were on. She always just thought they were so cool. Yeah. But yeah, my sister's definitely into it. Anytime I would always have a problem, she's so like, "Oh, do you wanna? Do you wanna see?" I'm like, <laughs> I was like, "I don't know." Yeah. I was like, I was like twelve. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> okay, fair. <laughs> well, it's actually funny. That's when I bought my first Oracle deck. Was really? when I was twelve, and I had, yeah, a- and I just I was at a bookstore and I found it, and I was like, I need this. I need to have this, and it probably very similar to your mom at that mm-hmm. point. I just I liked the pictures, and I would go through the book, but like I couldn't wrap my brain around yeah. it. And I'm sure there's a reason for that. Like they don't want to give a child powers of divination. Yeah. It's just it's a little bit risky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You definitely know you're different. Like, I, if you probably asked your sister, she probably has known her yeah. whole life that this was something in her future. In her, it was her. Past. Yes, and how? Also, Halloween is like. My mom is Halloween. She loves Halloween so much. <laughs> I yeah. love your mom. <laughs> I love Halloween too. It's just so such a different. Yeah. It's just for the weirdos, you know. Well, it's the day that the veil is the thinnest between this world and their mm-hmm. world, and with a bunch of the witches I practice Mm -hmm. with. We always do a witch's night and we chant and we set intentions and things like that. Yes, it's if you're ever in Toronto, I'd love to have you. All witches unite. You live in Toronto? I didn't know you lived in Toronto. Yes. It's a fly out of the... Oh, that's you nice. know what? You have to go through customs and in, every week. Every time. <laughs> and you know, I, I don't even know different because when I was with TNA, uh, well, actually, I should say, so I only moved to the States when I worked for WWE, and that was mm-hmm. in 2007, 2008. And they flew me to McDo- or moved me to McDonough, Georgia. Oh, that's then where we closed the that. school is. Oh, is it? Yeah. Is it in the old Deep South uh, facility? I have no idea. What, if okay. It's in, it's in yeah. like the old gym. I hear McDonough's yeah. actually pretty up and coming. Like Jordan Grace and her husband live there. That's yeah, popping. A lot of people are moving it's there. Probably affordable. That's why. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, but still nice. Yeah, it is nice. When I lived there, and close to the airport, close to the airport, there was only a gas station, a Walmart, a Gold's Gym, and a bar. That's all. Like and houses, of course. But that's literally all that was in McDonough. It was, I. I oh, wow. coming from like a metropolitan city, even though it's Canada, I was like, I am not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> like, <laughs> everyone knows everyone's name and everyone's business. Yeah. And it was like a real, yeah. like, I had been to Mexico at that point. I'd been to South Africa, but I was like, shit, the South is different. The streets are real yeah. out here. Like, this is not a joke. <laughs> yeah. It does blow my mind. And you would know this from your years of travel. There's so many states and cities where people have literally never been 20 minutes outside of their city. It's crazy. Yeah. That's like my mom, she grew up in a town of 80 people and half of them was her family. So, oh <laughs> so God. yeah, she, like my uncle, he, you know, has only been to the cities a handful of times. So it's like, 
Yeah, or some. My mom had never been on an airplane until I think what was it, two thousand nine. That's and we went to Montana to go visit family. So I was like, yeah, it was. So you are real country. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, my dad grew up on a farm. He had horses, oh, wow. a bunch of dogs. And yeah. Both my parents grew up in super, super small towns. Yeah. So. And are they both from Minnesota? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, interesting. I'm like the first family member to really like go out of state. So it was kind of crazy. And you went to McDonough. <laughs> <laughs> it was just kind of crazy. I just I got up and moved. I didn't know oh, anybody wow. here, not like a single soul. So <laughs> that must have been a lot. That must have been a lot for you and for your family, considering like not only had they not left, but they're from really small towns. Yes, and my mom thinks like me traveling every week is like so glamorous, and like it's not. <laughs> I hate, tra- <laughs> I hate traveling. I, I really. know. I know. That's how I felt too when the first time I left. Mm-hmm. There is a little bit of glamour. Like, it sucks. And we're like, you know, you just like get yeah. on the plane. You're like, I'm fucking I'm tired. Bleh. But like, yeah. <laughs> it, now that I had stepped away for so long, now that I'm back, I'm like, this is pretty cool. Like, yeah. if we had more time to do a little bit of sightseeing, I bet we'd all appreciate it a little bit more. I think so, too. Yeah. But now I feel like being home is like the luxury. I'm like, oh, my gosh, my own bed. <laughs> Yeah, because hotels get real boring real quick. Yes, they do. I think, and they don't even have refrigerators anymore. Really? Like yeah, little a lot of ones we stay at don't have refrigerators in the rooms, and I'm like, how are we supposed to keep our food cold? <laughs> <laughs> I know. And after COVID, we're also over Uber Eats. We like want to get oh food God, that is yeah. like homemade, kind of ish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think what people don't realize is how much of a grind the schedule is like Mm -hmm. you know you just have enough time well i don't do you guys fly in the day before tapings or the day of or it depends um it it depends on the flights lately i've been flying the day of but most the night before yeah so it's like okay let's just say hypothetically you fly in the night before you kind of unwind you probably can't sleep and then you get there in the morning you get ready and it's a long fucking day. Like you're there at the end of the day for like 12, 14 hours. And it's a lot of like, yep. okay, go, go, go. Now wait around for eight hours and go, 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 go. And wait around for eight hours. Yep. And then you yep. do that for multiple days. You get the first flight out because you want to go home because you've been staring at yeah. cement walls for however long. Exactly. And then it's like, okay, there's nothing glamorous about that. Yeah, it's just... You could have yeah, done that we, anywhere. We went to work. Yeah, we went to work. And I saw oh, nothing, but we're really thankful for it. But yes. yeah, I, I'm trying to be better at it this time of my career because I've yeah. literally been fucking everywhere. And I'm like, I don't remember any of it. Like I do, but. Yeah. Or like even, like I still haven't seen, I've been in New York probably like 10 times, never seen Times Square. Oh. That's so like. You need to do that. Even if you go on your own. Yeah. I've, Is it scary? I don't know. No, girl. See, the <laughs> okay. nice you, you just, okay, that's a good question, especially growing up where you grew up. <laughs> but, okay, so yeah. you, you just got to have street smarts. Like, I think traveling yeah. on your own is, like, the best way to grow up, the best way to have confidence mm-hmm. and be like, I did this by myself. And yeah. you're going where lots of people are tourists. You just have to be smart. Like, don't have a big fucking Louis Vuitton bag over your, yeah. you know, like, just don't be like, rob me. Obviously, I don't know anything. Yeah. <laughs> Please mug me. No, you can <laughs> definitely do it, especially because everyone grabs Ubers now and tra- yeah, like, that's true. as much downtime as you have. And you are young. You don't need to sleep that much. I am old. I need my sleep. Go and travel when you're out different places go see one thing i I don't need to do that more usually it's just the gym if i that's the that's the worst do that when you're home (laughs) 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 that's what i used to do Uh, same as you like it's so dumb because when you're in your early early 20s mid 20s like yeah you could fucking take a dump and you'll have abs like let's be real here like (laughs) (laughs) the morning's the best the morning's the best (laughs) <laughs> you like if you're on the road for four days you don't need to work out those four days fucking rest you're yeah. wrestling yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i 
that's honestly, I did exactly what you did. I traveled, I went to the gym, I napped, I never saw where I was. And the only reason I'm better at it now is because I have a young son and he comes on the road with me whenever it's Mm -hmm. my weekend. So I have to, I want to show him, like I I don't want to just show him the hotel and the venue, although he thinks that's great. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it is nice. It makes the travel different. I've had my mom with me, definitely. (gasps) I want to, one day I want to be able to just, get her plane tickets to whenever. I flew with my parents out last year at Double or Nothing to Vegas. Because they had, you know, never been to Vegas. So they were like, oh my god. Did they love it? Yeah, they loved it. And that was when I turned too. That's when I joined House of Black too. So that's exciting. Yeah. I think that's a really nice goal. Even if it's not every taping, obviously, if you can take your mama like once to a New month. York. Yeah. Yeah. Take her to Times yeah. Square. Take her to like yeah. the big ones. That would be so cool. And she really wants to see Wicked on oh, Broadway. Oh, that would be the best New York trip. And like yeah. the company's paying for the hotel. So fucking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was like with Vegas. I was like, oh, I have an extra bed. Like, yeah. Just come. That, like, yeah. that's. That's that's the priceless shit that like you can't get back. I'm yeah. actually like looking at things I want to do in the world and I'm trying to get booked around them now because I'm smarter because I'm older. I'm like, I have never been to the Calgary Stampede. I'm 37 years old. <laughs> Granted, it takes me as long to fly to Calgary as it does to Vegas. So I'm like, well, I'll yeah. just go to Vegas. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's those sort of things that you're like, well, you actually don't have to pay for a flight. Go get a booking like – Go see yeah. some sites. I feel like I'm probably boring our listening audience. Like, let's talk about what Julian Hart and I want to do. <laughs> this is what we want to do. If you guys want to listen, sure. But we're just having a normal conversation. Bro. This is why I love my show. <laughs> because it's just, it's just normal. Yeah, It's, it's not your, what's your dream opponent? Uh, who cares? <laughs> I don't know. Whatever creative rights for you. Fuck, it's not your decision. <laughs> no, I just want to wrestle everybody. Yeah. That's my honest opinion. I don't know. Everybody. Like, <laughs> what does it matter who I want to wrestle? Yeah. Like, I don't know. But whatever creative is going to make. Those are like the hardest and weirdest questions. And the constant questions. It's like. Yeah. Or I just can't wait for the day when someone actually like really digs in deep and like finds something weird about me that I didn't even remember. And I'm like, oh. Let's talk about your childhood trauma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> we don't have to do that. We'll save that for the next episode. Yes. <laughs> okay, but I do want to touch yeah. on your makeup lately. I don't know who's doing it, but I gypsy. fucking. Oh, gypsy. My it looks gypsy. so good. Is that her just like going yeah. for it or? I'll try to find stuff on Instagram or Pinterest. And then I'm like, here's inspo. Do whatever you want. Like the heart look we did last week. Yes. Stick to that shit because you're like doing this like new wave dark witch. And I really love it. Like this is what I showed her. Ooh, love yeah, it. Yeah, this is what I showed her. Love it. And the white lashes? Ugh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she loved it. Her. Loved it. You need yeah. you and Gypsy only. Like it's so good. And that brimmed hat with the like beading. Little, where was that? Where, where? Where? This is good. I loved it. So, we're in San Francisco, I believe. And I showed uh, Brody, Malachi, and Buddy. I was like, hey, what do you think about this hat? And it was a hat just like that, but instead it went to the floor. Like, the beads oh. went all the way down to the floor. And I'm like, I really like this hat. And they were like, cool. <laughs> and then the next day, Brody was like, hey, uh, I have a present for you. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, what is it? And it w- and then he found that hat. And I was like, oh, my God. I was like, what the? Oh my god, love Brody. <laughs> He's my stylist. So. Oh, that's so good. Uh, you know what? I actually I was wondering, do the guys help you? Oh yeah. Yes, they with your like style. Actually, in my outfit last week, the bleached out bodysuit, Brody made it. Okay, I'm gonna call Brody because I saw that dress and I was like, "Ooh, I saw that on Instagram." I was gonna do a photo shoot, but never mind. Julia did it first; it's fine. <laughs> no, dude, I think the bleach look is cool. I feel like I haven't really seen anybody do it. No, it looks so it could good. Be a I'm new gonna friend, and we started. Ooh, 
Ooh, I, I like where you're yeah. going with this. You do would it. Be really do good. Bleach. You could, yes. If we could get together and do a photo shoot, that would be really cool. Yeah. I love photo shoots. Me too. Because then we can get real creative and weird with it. Yeah, I love photo shoots. You're giving me ideas. Okay. <laughs> Let's do my top 10 tailor-made questions. Okay, so the first one, I start off real dark. Okay. Have you ever thought about your funeral? And if so, what would be your funeral song? I have thought about this. Fuck yes, you have. That's so, how I know who my people are. So, <laughs> so my favorite artist of all time is Michael Jackson. Ooh, good one. And... I wanted the song This Is It by Michael Jackson to be a part of my funeral. Even though it's like really sad. But I was like, I want people to be, you know, I want people to be sad at my funeral. So. Uh, uh. This Is It or literally any Michael Jackson song. I always say that if I die, I play Michael Jackson at my funeral. Any Michael Jackson song. Love yeah. this. And so as a cheerleader, it's just yeah. segue. You know, it, it's, it's very like staccato movements. Would you fancy yourself like a good dancer though? Yeah, I like to think okay. I'm a good dancer. Okay. You're not like fucking busting this out on oh, the dance floor. No, no, no. no okay. <laughs> My free time when I was younger, I definitely danced a lot. I did dance for like four years. Oh, okay. So before I okay. even did cheer. Perfect. But dancing, I've always loved to dance. Like Michael Jackson. When I was younger, my whole family, my whole family sit down at like Christmas or something. Like, okay, guys, you're going to watch me do the beat it dance. Oh, I love that. I used <laughs> to do that walk. all the time actually like that's how you know there's something wrong with us entertainers like we're the ones that are sitting our entire families down at christmas and like yes. watch this routine i came up with it is amazing and it's so the <laughs> and they're like seeing it don't beat yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> like i got in trouble in first grade for grabbing my crotch like michael jackson <laughs> just wanna giving you giving you all the backstory i got in trouble i had to go to the principal's office Okay, but context. Were you just like in class and just went for a full we were, gra uh, vag grab, or <laughs> we were we were cleaning up and we were cleaning up the clean up songs like clean up and I was like going clean up, clean up like that's what was happening. And then a little boy he hated me for some reason. He was like oh. Julia's grabbing her crotch, and the teacher you know was like oh my god, <laughs> and he's like she she's is. Like, oh, comfortable. And then they send us to the principal's office, and then the principal was like, okay, draw what happened. And the boy was like, you know, like laughing because I'm getting in trouble. <laughs> and then they call my mom, and mom's like, Julia was dancing provocatively. And my mom's just <laughs> laughing, and she's like, no, she just loves Michael Jackson. She wasn't trying to make anybody uncomfortable. My mom was literally laughing, like, what the heck? Well, it, you're in first grade. Like, yeah. I mean, I didn't know better. I was like, Michael Jackson, that's what Michael Jackson does. Yeah, that's like his move. It's not well. Okay, there's more to that with like children and indecent touching. But like, okay. yeah, it was, it was like first grade. <laughs> yeah, you were just you were doing you you were living your best first yeah. grade life. That's what yeah. was happening. And that little boy, you know, snitches get stitches. So yeah, we'll uh, see what he happened to him. hated me. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. What is your zodiac sign? I'm a Scorpio. Mm, that's really interesting because. I could okay on first encounter I see the Scorpioness, but like I think as soon as you vibe your person you're like walls down. I think I, I think my son is Leo. I think ah yeah then your moon probably your moon is Leo. I think my moon's a Scorpio too. Oh your moon's a Scorpio. Yeah. So your rising is a Leo or yes. Oh, okay. Interesting. Ooh, so double Scorpio and Leo. I'm an Aquarius yeah. sun, double Leo, Leo moon, Leo rising. So we're actually, okay. this, makes, this makes sense. I get yeah. this now. <laughs> <laughs> what is your secret supernatural power? Hmm. I was going to go all House of Black and say I can turn off the lights, but. Girl. <laughs> We don't all have this power, yeah, so actually, that's your secret. You can turn off the lights and teleport. <laughs> so <laughs> you win, you win. Mic drop. You have the best supernatural power. <laughs> turn off the lights. <laughs> do you believe in ghosts? And if so, do you have a ghost story? I do believe in ghosts. So when I was in the fourth grade, I was fascinated by Ouija boards. Uh oh. We went to Mall of America. My dad found one. And he's like, oh, honey, look, uh, a Ouija board. And I was like, oh my God, I want it. And I had like $20. And 
It was sixteen dollars, <laughs> so I bought it. And then, not knowing any of the rules to an Ouija board, we, me and my friend, went downstairs and we started just messing around with it. And then, after that day, I swear to God, our house has been haunted ever since. My dog at the time was scared of the stairs, and he would sometimes get locked like in the bathtub at night. He could be in the oh bathtub, he'd, like, no. Bark and, it was just so, like, he got in the bathtub but not couldn't get out of it. It was really weird. And that wow. dog literally was a demon, so it, yeah, <laughs> so. So maybe it was the dog, like, maybe it, like. Some spirit. Got so, attached to the dog. Yeah, and I slept in the basement, and it always sounded like people were, were walking upstairs if they weren't. It was just so, but I kind of accepted it. Like, it wasn't like I was really scared. I was just like, oh. But you just knew. Yeah. That's a thing with Ouija boards. I feel like it's the first question that people ask anyone associated with witchcraft. Do you fuck around with Ouija boards? And the answer is absolutely not. Yeah. If you are a witch, you know that you are not introducing or opening a portal into your home. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> but we do it as children. We do it as children. Yeah. And that's when we're the most susceptible. And that's actually like absolutely when you're going to say hello evil spirits please come into my home because i don't know any better <laughs> and you're scared shitless and they also attach to that yeah because same thing happened i was like 12 or 13 and i was or maybe younger nine or ten i don't know let's say younger <laughs> and playing with a ouija board with a bunch of girlfriends and i don't know it was moving and we were getting all like excited and scared yeah. and all the lights in the whole house turned off like every single like it wasn't i don't know maybe her mother was fucking with us i don't think so <laughs> but if she was it was really funny but like i don't you never hear of anybody having like a positive experience with a ouija board they're never like oh i communicated with my granddad they're like fucking yeah the, sh the house caught on fire it was really bad like <laughs> yeah i was always so fascinated by them when i was younger and i always and then and I remember when my friends would come over and like put it out to like try and scare them. I was messed. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that no, no, none of that in McDonough, none of that in Georgia. <laughs> if you do sage every yeah. day, please. No. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, nip slip, lip slip, shart, incontinence, pee. What has been in your most embarrassing moment in the ring? Um, <laughs> probably when I wrestled at the. Nightmare Factory is like my first match and Okay. Okay, also the cheer gear would yes. crazy camel toe. Ooh. So anytime like if someone pinned me crazy camel toe, <laughs> you know, you know how gross just they can be. Lycra vagina. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely the camel toe. Yeah. <laughs> <It's fair. laughs> Actually there's another one. Whenever it was just whatever the last pay per view was. You know on tights? How there's like a white part on the vagina part. Yes, the like triangle. Yeah, and it wore a bodysuit. Yep. And you could kind of see the triangle. Like, oh, like no one's going to see it. My legs aren't going to be open. Yeah. I took the yeah. V trigger from Kenny and it, my legs yeah. flailed. And there's like a split yep. second. Someone took a screenshot of it and goes, Julia's <sighs> on her period. I'm like, no, it was my tights. <laughs> it was my tights. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, yeah. let's take the positive though. Someone literally went through the like screen, like went through a whole yeah. fucking series of the exact Millis. Like it was like thank I you didn't for even being notice such a wonderful it. fan. Yeah, just a weirdo, and then being like, "Julie's on her period. She has a pad." I'm like, there's a full moon. Fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> oh, so weird. Oh, you People, I know, I'm sorry, yeah. but you obviously have a very good head on your shoulder about yeah. it. Like, <laughs> yeah, was you're like, young okay. and you're just like... I thought it was funny. I literally sent it to my mom. I was like, oh. I was like, oh my gosh, these people are so stupid. And I sent it, because I remember I was talking about it with the girls in the locker room too. I was like, guys, is this bad? They're like, no, nobody's going to see it. I'm like, yeah, you're right. And I'm like, guys, everybody's so Don't. <laughs> it was kind of funny, just because like, I had the thought in my head, but like, no one's going to see it. And then people don't worry we've all been there yeah. in some capacity and like think fucking whatever <laughs> at this point i swear to god if my vagina came out i'd just be like nah you're like, welcome whatever <laughs> free, free <posts>. out there <laughs> <laughs> i didn't have an only fan so there you go 
<laughs> can't have to watch solidarity have to watch the show on TBS. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my body suit. <laughs> Maybe it is. I don't know. <laughs> okay. What's you? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what's your professional wrestling pet peeve? Ooh, when people sell their mouth and their mouth wasn't a hit. Is that bad? <laughs> when people like, no, it's a good. It's a great like one. This. I'm like, yeah, and they took a back bump. Yeah, I'm like, why? You're like, did you bite your tongue? <laughs> I always think, like, I'm so confused. It's just, that's probably, like, my biggest pet peeve. That's a good one. I, I feel that way, like, if you take an insiguri mm-hmm. to the back of the head, and then they, you bump backwards. I know, like, sometimes it's just, like, you're thinking about the next thing, but you're like, dude. Yeah, definitely. The- <laughs> How in gravity did you, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my God. Oh. You got. <laughs> that one. <laughs> they stepped on your toe, and you're like, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite band or artist well i think michael we jackson this. but it also like changes every week too like michael jackson is the number one but then it's like you know what's the current thing and right now I've been what's your to a what's lot your of, current i've been listening to a lot of paramore oh paramore yeah i've been listening to a lot of paramore i love yeah. paramore i got into that actually uh, got into the band a lot later like mm-hmm. i think it was too old for the first phase and now I listen back and I was like, this is this is some good shit. I, I get what we're doing here. Or I'm like listening, like, wait, I already know this song. I'm like, oh my god, they did <laughs> yeah. a lot of stuff. They did do it. Their their back catalog is massive considering yeah. like they're not. The whole old. Twilight. Mm. I'm like, oh my gosh, I love all the Twilight songs. So good. Ask Madison Rain about Twilight. That girl was uh Okay, well. Obsessed. Like, you remember, us bitches are old, so we were around when the stories first came out. Like, we were in the TNA locker room, like, trading. Yep. Actually, it was me, Awesome Kong, and Madison Rain. But Madison Rain, like, took it way too far. Like, I think yeah. she thought she was going to be a Cullen at one point. Yeah. I'll just <laughs> bring it up her. to her and not even ask her. I'll just, like, say it. Like, yeah. I already, yeah. Just to freak yeah, her out and, or something. And tell her her head is too big for her body. Yeah. Okay. That's also a very important fact. <laughs> I love her very much. We are she, long She's friends. so sweet. I love her too. Yeah. Her head is too big for her body. <laughs> <laughs> Name a movie that changed your life. Ooh. So this one was kind of recent. Kill Bill. Oh, that's yeah. a goodie. I think what was it about it just like the badassery of yeah just her confidence I started Mm. watching it as I was like turning into House of Black and I was just watching it just (sighs) and I was just like oh my gosh like that's who I want to be like that's how much of a badass I want to be so I feel like Mm. that really like gave me some confidence was that movie definitely that's that's a good one and that's a great character to base yeah your house of black character on i love that for you yeah now i just love uma thurman and i'm just (laughs) she's great oh my gosh she really is great yeah who is your most embarrassing crush of all time Ooh, probably drake bell who's that from drake and josh Oh, I feel like this is like an old people thing. Okay. Drake. It's like a Nickelodeon Bell. show. And then, oh, yeah, that's definitely you've lost it. And then it came out <laughs> like just a couple of years ago that he was oh, like texting cute. younger girls. And I was like, oh, that's okay, not you. Cute, I can't believe no. I had a crush on him mm-hmm. when I was like in kindergarten, but. That's not your fault. Yeah, that's probably an embarrassing one. It's not just your fault. I just saw photos. He's cute. That's fair. But. And I was like in kindergarten, sure. But. Yeah. Yeah. Where can our listeners find you on the interwebs? What are your socials? Just the Julia Hart on Instagram and Twitter. That's what the only social media I use. And then I am going to start a YouTube. Yay! I'm going to start a YouTube. You the Julia Hart. I literally just started it. Like I just filmed oh. something yesterday. So. Oh, amazing! So it's yeah. up and coming. Yes. Now I just said it, so now it has to happen. <laughs> Yes, now it, you've manifested it. It's happening. Great. Yes. <laughs> okay. Last, last one. Finish this lyric. <clears throat> Billie Jean is not my lover. She's just a girl. I got. I can't sing. <laughs> girl that I, am. I can't sing. We <laughs> missed Michael. We missed Michael. Grab the crotch. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well this was so so fun truly i hope you had a good time i did yeah i, like I didn't think like it was podcast. Like a podcast yeah it was great it's a really good excuse to hang out as well yes <laughs> this 
there is always room for more witches in the world of professional wrestling. And there's certainly always more room for witches on the Wild On podcast and YouTube channel. So don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell, and tune in every week when we get Wild On Wednesdays. And if you are an Impact Plus subscriber, you get access to the show a day early. That's right. Taylor Wild Tuesdays. I really do hope you're enjoying the content that we are bringing you weekly because we are growing. The podcast has been on fire and I know you all enjoyed last week's episode with Soraya because I did too. Not last week, excuse me, two weeks ago, maybe a month ago. Maybe you're just tuning in for the first time and you need to hit the back catalog because it is star studded with some of the biggest names in professional wrestling today. Speaking of which... I could not, would not be able to do this podcast without my badass punk rock girl band, The Wild On Team. My queen, my right-hand woman, Rochelle Duras, editor and producer, and our queen of marketing relations, public relations, things on the interwebs that I just literally don't know how to do, Madison Golshani. Thank you. I love you guys. And until next week, keep calm and wild on. Blessed be. Blessed be.